Hey guys, it's Group Chat time. Number one podcast in the world. Just a few Ivy League grads sitting around having a chat. In between our jobs at space. It's a busy life, but someone's got to do it. <laughs> Have I told you about the newest updates on the metaverse? No, please yeah, do. I'll tune you in right after the episode. <laughs> uh, we're going to tell you guys. We've been getting some questions about why we have Harvard uh, banners up in the studio. We have a lot of new listeners coming in from, I'd say, mainly TikTok. Yeah. Uh, and they're confused. Yeah. So we're going to explain. Yes. Um, we also have a lot to talk about. And, and I'll be honest, um, one thing that we do here sometimes is, you know, a lot of people write to us and say like, Thank you for the the guidance or the input or the whatever you you I quit my job because of you and started a new thing I whatever thank you well you're really gonna want to thank us uh, after today and yeah. we're accepting all thank yous yes because we're gonna put you on to the hottest new stock that is absolutely just skyrocketing I mean to the moon literally maybe you missed GameStop um, AMC you missed uh, Doge Bitcoin Bitcoin it's okay. This is your Bitcoin. We got you covered. This is your Bitcoin. All we're going to ask you to do is take your morals, throw them out the window for a quick minute. <laughs> uh, and then we have a lot of other stuff to talk about. We have some very unfortunate news in the um, Hollywood movie world and uh, a lot to go over. Yeah. You ready? Let's go. Let's do it. Cash. Ladies and gentlemen, group chat. Cash. Cash. Hey, D. Hey. Back where we started again. <laughs> two guys. Just two guys, a couple ideas. In the subway. In the subway. <laughs> I, we need our old table back. Yeah. You know, our tile. Tiles. Um, I did get a, you know, on our Discord, we have like uh, a lot of new listeners that are joining and just they're finding it through TikTok yeah. and just end up in our Discord. Yep. Um, and someone asked, why do we have a Harvard flag? Oh. Uh, because well, let them know. I'm elitist when it comes to education. I don't know if you know the word alumnus. Alumnus. Mm -hmm. And I like to pretend I went to Harvard. So for the record, for the new listeners, nobody here went to Harvard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> even though you would think this is like a Harvard dorm room podcast. Yes. Like if you stumbled upon, <laughs> if you stumbled upon oh, yeah. our set, you'd be like, who are these old dudes in like a Harvard a dorm? Like grad students that never left. Yeah, like our, like our trophy. growing trophy. <laughs> Gro nobody's, yeah. nobody's surfing in Harvard. <laughs> That's true. But but they probably do have these shitty, like, you know, like a, <laughs> like a collage of all their homies. Like, yo, bro, yeah. West Coast. <laughs> I know the lifestyle. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we just pretend because I and, yeah. and, and I encouraged listeners to go buy Harvard merch. Yeah. And just walk around town and see how you get treated. So your per perception changes. It's instant. Yeah. You go around, talk about NFTs wearing a Harvard hoodie. You'll probably be rich in like six months. Six months. Yeah. Everyone's talking about crypto. Just wear a Harvard sweatshirt. Yeah, that's true. It's way faster. That's very true. <laughs> Who doesn't like someone from Harvard? But if you wear a Harvard sweatshirt and talk about crypto, yeah, yeah, people yeah. just hand you money. Money, yeah. I'm start I'm I've dropped out of Harvard to start a metaverse fund. There you go. <laughs> Rich. Who's not giving that person money? Just go Bernie Madoff that shit away <laughs> yeah, in like a cares. year. Have the year of your life. <laughs> 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 um, speaking of crypto and stuff like that, how was the, you know, you did a pod with Ian. Yeah. So Ian was in town from Paris. Good old Ian Rogers. Ian Rogers. And uh, I wanted him to do the Sunday episode. Yep. But he was traveling back to Paris today. So, uh, you know, we have an awesome partnership with Ledger. So I wanted to make sure we got him done as soon as possible because we're going to, it's going to be like probably a monthly series of conversations with him. Yep. And so he's like, I'm free right now. And I'm like, Fuck it. Just come by the office. I'm yeah. here. Plus he's, you know, I would say maybe the favorite guest. Yeah. I, I mean, it sounds like he is based yeah. on, uh, I, I think people thought we weren't going to release an episode. Then we just released it Friday night yeah. and got a ton of amazing feedback um, from a lot of people. Just, I think, I think it, what the thing that he did really, really well is just explain if you don't understand NFTs at all, yep. explain why they make sense in the future so or like even present. So all of our talk of like, you know, not quite getting it. Did he answer a lot of those questions? Yeah, because for him, it's not like, it's not about speculation, about making money. It's just more of like taking advantage of tribalism and community. And yeah. NFT is like, like he, his best example he used is if you go to a concert or you go to a dinner mm -hmm. at some restaurant, you want a, like a piece of merch to say that you went there. So I use yeah. the example as, as, 
when we were growing up as children, we went to hard rock cafes all over the world. I was going to say the, the same thing. Yes. And, and my so, parents, even all the way in Ohio, had the similar passion. Exactly. So yeah. I had the same passion as your parents. Yeah. And the idea there was to capture something that you get to rem- as a remembrance of going there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, or you went to a concert and, you know, you just want to have something that signified that yeah. you were there. Yeah. And I think it's really about proof of that's what NFT really is. Yeah. And I think when you explain it like that, you can understand why it's impo- it can be very, very important yeah. in the near future. Yeah. Like he used example, like the souvenir business basically should be gone because if you can only get an NFT, if you went to the Empire State Building, yeah. then cool. Like it makes a lot of sense then to, um, to, to own that NFT and keep it as a collector's item. Yeah. So, so he's think, obviously thinking way more long-term, not like the quick get rich scheme. Yeah. Cause he, I think he thinks he said it, the speculation is very dangerous. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and that make, I can I can deal with that. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think that explanation was really really good. And you know, just and, and then talking about his career and all that stuff was amazing. But I think his simple explanation of why NFTs should exist, yeah, okay, made a I'll lot listen. of sense. I'll listen. Yeah, I still need to be sold. Yeah, I think if you listen to it, you're gonna have a very different perspective of it. Because then you're gonna be like, oh, like I went to, um, uh. uh a Drake concert. Yeah. You and I are probably not going to buy Drake merch. Yeah. But we want some memento that yeah. we went there, right? And so if you get an NFT airdrop to you at the Drake concert, or you can buy it and it's a limited edition of 1,000. Yeah. That's something. That makes sense. Okay. That, I'll listen. Because yeah. I don't disagree that there, there seems to be a technology there that is beneficial long term. Yeah. It's just all these crypto bulls and ape <laughs> clubs and board yachts. That's like, why well, everyone, so everyone's just rich. I don't know if this is, I didn't look at them, but no offense to our boy. Um, but somebody on TikTok posted like, here's the NFTs that Gary Vee is making. And they're like hand drawn. Yes. Like, and they're worth a lot of money. And they're like Gary Vee drawings. Yes. Have you seen them? Yeah. Vee friends. If Go look at the volume. A- Go look at the volume being traded on it every day. I think the floor is like 10 ETH. I just need someone to explain to me, and I don't know if anyone can actually, but like how that isn't just the greatest sign of just bubbly so he's, fuckery. He's, he's also saying utility. So for his events, for his... like Put it like this. Let's put Gary for a second aside. A business we do know and, and understand that's huge. Mm-hmm. Tony Robbins. Mm-hmm. If he did an NFT and he said... The only way you can get into the next event. Yes, I agree. To, and by the way, we personally know plenty of people who yep. buy that Tony Robbins yep. NFT and would do it. So I think if you assume Gary V is the Tony Robbins of the next generation. But Gary V's just, seen, it almost seems like someone playing a prank to show how ridiculous NFTs are. And like, you know, when like they do like Jimmy Kimmel on the street and yeah, they just yeah. prove how ridiculous like yeah. people's whatever vaccine thoughts are. Yeah. It almost feels like, hey, I'm going to just see. I'm going to share. I don't want to share it because I don't think it's public. I'll share it with you afterwards. Someone else that we know that did an NFT last week and insane amount of money. You got to show me. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to, jaw's going to drop. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. You want to talk about some news? Yeah. Why, some- why don't we change it up? Why yeah. don't we start with depressing? Yes. And then we'll ramp it up to fun. Yes. Okay. So here we go into the the weird, depressing news uh, that rocked the world. Was this Friday night or Saturday, maybe? Yeah, Friday. Um, Alec Baldwin, it looks like, uh, unintentionally shot and killed a woman. Yes. He was on the set of his, is it a movie or a show? Movie. Movie. It's a Western movie. It was in, what, Santa Fe? New Mexico, yeah. New Mexico. Um, I, don't, nobody, I don't think we know the details yet, but he shot a prop gun. Um. A projectile came out of it, shot a woman in the chest, um, killed her, grazed the shoulder of the director. Uh, he's he's out of the hospital. Um, so I've seen. Let me just once again. I mean, let me let me gather my TikTok journalism. I've seen that it could have been a projectile that was lodged in the barrel, which is common. Um, Bruce Lee's son died the same yeah, day. Yeah, Brandon. Yeah. Um, so Another it was not. Said, I was trying. I was reading a, looking at a diagram. It's still a bullet. 
Yeah, it just doesn't have a live lead bound on the end. But so that bullet, it can still kill you? If that... No, so like the way a bullet works is there's like the whole cylinder part is just the explosion, which propels because it's so thin, down the barrel propels this the little point on the end. But if you do it without the point on the end, you just get the bang and nothing shoots out. But if there's anything in the barrel, it'll shoot that out. So yeah. if any, literally anything, it's going to, all that power is going to force down the barrel and shoot whatever's in there out. But I also saw something on TikTok that there was indeed a live round in the gun. So th- th- I got, I was reading the article about it and apparently someone yelled cold gun, mm. which means there's no live ammunition in it. Mm-hmm. So I just don't understand what, like, I just, I, I watch action movies all the time. Yeah. S- Dark Knight or Fast, whatever. Yeah. It all looks fake. Why are we using real fucking guns? I don't know, but apparently that's the other thing I didn't know is that anytime there's a prop gun, it's a real gun. It's a, it's a fake round. Like they I, don't use fake guns. So this movies. is where like Hollywood elites yeah. who are very anti-gun. Yeah. You have live fucking guns on your set? Here's what blows my mind. To your point, of all the technology that we have in the yes. world, and like you're telling me we make the movie Avatar. I mean, that was like two decades. That was yeah. forever ago. Yeah. But the point is we make these crazy movies, Star Wars, whatever. You can't get a fake gun to look real enough. Yeah. Because they obviously do it so it looks real. To, it actually does the same thing. And the sound we does. know we, is easy to mimic. Yeah. It's not hard. The, the reaction to it is not hard. They're actors at the end of the day. I just watched, I finally got to watch it, Fast 9 on the airplane. Good for you. And was it everything you hoped? A phenomenal, okay. phenomenal film. Okay. Um, but that thing had the most crazy action sequences. Yeah. Things are just cars blowing. I mean, come on. That's, That's, That's all fucking fake. You can like blow up the White House in a movie. Yes, and apparently, like yeah, exactly. Apaches, but you can't fucking shoot a, a old Colt 45. And, and, and apparently there was two other incidents with prop guns on the set the same prior set? to this. And there was a walkout from the staff before. Like, this is just sloppy. Who's the prop master here? Somebody's yeah, they, they have a video of the person not, not going to be popular on the internet. No. Can you imagine like... Can you imagine going to work? 42-year-old woman has a nine-year-old son, married. I mean, you're a cinematographer, like, like kind of the jackpot role when you move to yeah. LA to be in Hollywood. Yeah. And you just get... Shot in the chest. And die? By the way, why was the gun pointed? At a cinematographer. I don't know. Yeah, I mean like... But maybe he's like shooting the camera. You know? You can Uh, picture a scene where you're like, bang, right into the camera. That's insane. Or he's messing around. I don't know. But if they're yelling cold gun, the the picture I... This is completely made up. But the picture I made up was he was doing a scene where he's shooting towards the camera and it's like a cool shot. But it just shoots the camera person. I don't care if it was fake or real. If I see a gun pointing at me, I'm not standing there trying to be a fuck. Oh, yeah, I, I need to get the shot. Fuck that. I just do not. It blows my mind in 2021. This is even possible. Considering everything we talk about on this, about the metaverse and technology. Yeah. There's no reason for a gun to be on the set of a movie. No. Look at what we talk about. You're right. Yeah. We talk about buying fucking land in the Culver City of the metaverse because yeah. the investments are looking good and they might build up some opportunity and people are still getting shot with an old gun on a movie set. It's insane. Insane. You cannot have real guns anywhere. I'm sorry. Like, this is so fucking stupid. But what, I mean, look, obviously, 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 the, that poor woman, the family, all that. Yeah. Even the director who got shot in the arm or yeah. the shoulder or whatever. But think about being Alec Baldwin here. Yeah, I mean, it looks like there were some video pictures. I guess he was consoling the husband. He went and visited. Can you imagine yeah. having to live with, you go meet that husband, you shot and killed his wife, point blank. Yeah. Alec Baldwin, history in Hollywood has not been rough. Good. It's been rough. And the internet is like, this shows you how fucked up the internet is. There are parts of the internet coming for him, saying he needs to be arrested. He murdered somebody. This is how stupid people are, but he's going to have to I, live with that. He's going to have to probably. But be at the end down of the, the day, look, I'm not saying it's his fault there was a bullet in there. Yeah. But like you pulled the trigger. I know, but he was, he's doing his job. I understand. I'm just saying. There's he's probably to say, all argue. the years of Hollywood and this archaic system we have, I'm not doing that. He's just part of the drill. He's probably fired. 
a thousand guns at cameras. Yeah. Crazy. I know, but but if you're the family, and it, it, the, the, I think the father came out and said that I don't hold Alec Baldwin, yeah, you know, accountable for this, uh, or don't blame him for this, but. There's going to be lawsuit. Yeah. So who's who are you blaming? The prop prop, prop person? Prop guy. That's who it falls on. The studio? Yeah. It's the liability of the studio and the prop person. All, all day, the prop person is responsible for the safety and the reliability of the prop. If you're driving in a car and uh, the brakes go out and you hit a wall, the prop person should have tested that. It's, it, was, it was, I think there's, there's an armorist on set who is 24 years old. That's who was responsible for this. Which right. yeah, after seems like the right job you want to yeah after after on, a right? walkout it's like yeah but there was just, a walkout yeah well, the, the the crew walked out so oh, it's like this had, had happened like yeah. days before and they had like a, a from just unfair treatment and guns. just like poor regulation on set yeah and then this happens and it's like of yeah. course it happens you know wild this is, and coinciding with all of the like uh, strikes from a- IATSE like all the Hollywood crews that are. Yeah, this doesn't right help now. their cause. This is, I mean, this is like... What studio is this? There's going to be changes. I don't know. The studio is yeah. fucked. There's yeah. going to be changes. Oof. All right. Well, I don't really know what else to say. We'll find out what happened as far as, was it a real gun? Was it shrapnel? Uh, it's sad. Very I mean, sad. just insane. And it just feels like something that should be a story from like the 1950s. Yeah. You know, in Hollywood. Yeah. I just don't understand what the technology you have right now. You should. Right. You don't even need Alec Baldwin there for Christ's sake. <laughs> for real. You, you literally can, can just. Yeah. I've seen little Michaela. She looks real as fuck. She's great. Put a picture of Alec Baldwin. Yeah. Have Michaela. him just voice over it NFT and do the phase. movie. Yeah. I mean, come on. It's that's crazy. What is this corny ass real life acting? It's crazy. <laughs> it's so crazy. Okay. Uh, question for you. So I think we all saw the news, uh, the most recent news about Facebook. But are you telling me, okay, so Facebook is, they made this huge like announcement or whatever that they're going to focus super heavy on the metaverse, whatever. But the one part of the story that didn't make any sense to me is they said that they're going to change their name. Yes. So do you think like they're actually going to change their name? I think like, they're going like, to change the name of their company. And October 28th, uh, they're making some big announcement. A fucking brilliant. Like Alphabet? Like yeah. creating alphabet, yeah. Like, like, so the the website that like you still go to Facebook. The Trumpers are still going to go on yeah. and rant about the wall. It's yeah. still called Facebook. Yes, got it. So Facebook will just be a property okay. of the company. It makes way more sense. Yeah, and and so uh, look, I think he Mark Zuckerberg, you know, he did go to Harvard with us. He's a so sharp like, guy, yeah. you know, I this, this is this is creme de la creme of intelligence. Yeah. He saw the writing on the wall. Yeah, and he's like, yeah. fuck this. So but he fumbled this with uh, crypto. He did. He did fumble this with to crypto. Me, same thing, right? Different time, but you see something coming. And I think he, this this he knows. He made the bet on Oculus years ago, and we've all been sitting here looking at Oculus, be like, why the hell did he buy this stupid hardware company? Yeah, which probably doesn't make any money, doesn't do anything. Yeah, and now the whole mindset mindset has yep. shifted. To this metaverse. I mean, the l- episode last week we had with Rusty. Yeah. It sounds crazy, but it's happening. And yeah. he's like, fuck it. We're going all in on this. Honestly, as a CEO of a publicly traded company that's nearly worth a trillion dollars, that has the most headwinds of any company. Yeah. He's just like, makes such a drastic change. I think he's going to look like a genius yeah. 10 years from now when... Facebook.com or Facebook, the app is irrelevant. Yeah. And he's the hardware provider because like you could argue that we probably don't have phones in the future. I don't think so. And so he might be building the glasses that we're all wearing yeah. instead. Yeah. So you, you, here's my thing though. Either that, either you're 100% right or the whole idea of the metaverse is exactly what people do not want from Facebook. Yeah, like Facebook's reputation, unfortunately, is now terrible. The people who are the metaverse types, I believe, are kind of anti-establishment. Yeah, yeah, anti-establishment, but also anti like Facebook sort of Trump yeah. election help. Yeah, like just you know, and and I feel like the same way. 
that the crypto move, I don't believe, ever would have worked. Um, because that's the whole point of it. Yeah. It's like you don't want a crypto from Facebook. The, the entire point is that no one owns it. Yeah. So I just wonder if the metaverse the metaversers are like, fuck you. Yeah. Like the cops are showing up to the party and I, you're like, fuck off. I think that's everyone's knee-jerk reaction. Mm-hmm. But if the technology True. helps the entire community. He just has to do it so well. Yeah. I mean, have you seen the new Oculus? No. It's fucking incredible. What's different? It's just... It's just really like you, you, when you use it, you're like, oh shit, I know where the world's going. They got to make them smaller. Yeah. I mean, look, they're Enough still ugly. Fucking... Yeah. 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 All that will we'll have to, it just needs to be like the glasses you're wearing. Yeah. Like whatever brand you want to wear, Louis Vuitton. Yeah. Imagine Oct- if you have like an NFT outfit and I have my glasses and when I look at you, I see what you wore yeah, put today. Put together. Yeah. I'm down for that. Yeah, you just have like chains on and shit, <laughs> yeah. and fucking drapes. Well, I'd I'd wear chains and a and and nice watches in the metaverse. Yeah, I just don't want to wear it in real world. Right, especially not around here. You can't rob me in the metaverse. No, you can't. You, you hack me. Ooh, they'll hack you. <laughs> right. All of a sudden, your chain just, disappears. Yeah, you're like, I just got chain snatched <laughs> in the sudden, metaverse. <laughs> All of a you already know, Soldier Boy is gonna get chain snatched <laughs> in the metaverse. He'll be first. First rapper to get robbed in the metaverse. <laughs> Oh but the person God. that robbed you this time is like this little nerdy kid from yep. like Singapore. Just walking around with your <laughs> chain on. What's up? <laughs> oh my God. Uh, okay. Well, I will say that if you are swimming in the metaverse, <clears throat> there's no greater sign that it is the future. No matter what happens with Facebook figuring yeah. it out or not. Yeah. The fact that he's talking about this dramatic of a change has to be a, an alert that uh, it's where the party's going. Yeah. It's interesting. Okay. I got Very interesting. Ian. I still don't get it. Um, okay. Uh, what's up with Snapchat? Snapchat stock? <laughs> I, I mean, I was kind of banking on Snapchat here. Uh, yeah, we were all real high on Snapchat. Rocket ship type stuff. Rocket ship just got clobbered. What happened? Um, they, they, they released their earnings on Thursday of last week and the stock just went down like 20 something odd percent, like 25%. Market cap is now $88 billion. It's still a huge company. But I think, you know, what, what we've already been talking about for months, literally six months, which is Facebook's, I, uh, Facebook has been drastically affected by o- iOS 14. We knew that. Yep. And they're the creme de la creme of advertising products, right? I think maybe it might be right here to give a really quick 30-second explanation of what Apple changed in the new iOS that is impacting so heavily. So the easy way to explain it is when Apple did their update in this past spring on iOS 14, you as a user started getting asked for every app you downloaded, ask app not to track yep. or accept. Or like permission to track. Yeah. Yeah. Who the fuck said yep. yes to that? Yeah. And that ultimately... Even the way it was positioned seemed... Look, I'm all for like security to be... I'm a little torn here because yeah. obviously like we advertise and, and at the same time, I respect people's things. But like the way it's positioned, no one's going to s- s- turn that on. Yeah, please track me. Yeah. No one's going to say yes. Yeah, it doesn't... So what happened was all of these people opted out of being tracked. And Facebook was always the best at targeting like you were able to build audience to find exactly who your customers and serve them ads. Yeah. And, and find out exactly what they did with the ad. Exactly. So you had Facebook had all this data and was accurately serving your ads to the right audience. Yep. Instantly this thing happens, ads fall off a cliff. Yep. Attribution is gone. So attribution what that means is if you're a um advertiser and you look at your tracking on Facebook, on Google, on Snap, on TikTok, it's so bad now because yep. you just don't know how this customer is coming to you because all of these apps that were used to track and you know follow us yeah. are now not able to do so. That's also, it's, it's, it's even slightly affected us on, um, on email. Because even yeah. on email, if, if people get it through Apple Mail, yeah. it's just new, different things where you don't quite get the same yeah. statistics. Well, the thing with Apple on the on the email side of things, if it delivers the mail, it's considering an open. It's considering open. Yeah. So the open rates are through the fucking roof, yeah. and it's not true. Yeah. It's wrong. So then we're getting we're getting fed wrong data. We knew that this is going to affect Facebook, yeah. and then Snapchat. Unfortunately, they're still not premier ad product. 
Yeah. It's not like the most desired ad product. Yeah. So they came out and said iOS 14 really affected us. Their uh, revenue growth wasn't there. I mean, they're still growing. They still had more users than expected. So, I mean, overall, the business is trending in the right direction. Yeah. But I definitely think like this is a huge problem for the industry. Yeah. Just anyone who sells anything on the internet, yeah. if you rely on an ounce of advertising, yeah. your business has changed. Yeah. Like you can't use it the way that we used it six months ago or a year ago. And so Snap, you know, warned that these changes are affecting their business. The good thing about them, longer term, similar to Facebook, Facebook's in the metaverse. These guys are coming for the metaverse too. Are they? Oh yeah, they said that. They're they're working on AR. They're working on all you know, so much augmented reality stuff. That's all gonna. I think everyone's gonna kind of have to go in that direction because ads is gonna be a real tough place to make money anytime yeah. in the near future. Guess whose ad business has gone up? Apple. Oh, they should have guessed instantly. It's up. It's way up. It's cl- it's like instant. And they just started their ad business. Where do their ads live? I mean, there's uh, there's ads in the app store. There's mm. they're slowly rolling out ad products everywhere. Uh, shit, they win. Yeah, I mean that is. I will say like the same way a business is at the mercy of, you know, like a business based on one of these platforms is at the mercy of the platform. Yeah. To be honest, all these platforms are at the mercy of Apple. Yeah. Like you know, like as big as Facebook is, as big as Snapchat is. You're beholden to Apple the same way we are to if Instagram goes down for a day. And, and I think, honestly, you know, six months ago when we were talking about, do we ever see a world where we're using something other than an iPhone? Yeah. And we all said no. They were too ingrained. I think you push too many trillion dollar companies around. Yeah. They're going to go develop the device. Yeah. And, I, and, and, and even Ian, to his point, was saying does Ledger make a phone in the future? Because this is not, Apple iPhone is not secure enough to hold your MetaMask, hold yeah. your crypto, hold your banking of the future. iPhone is very vulnerable today. Yeah, so, that's interesting. Uh, so I think, I think all, all these Apple changes subtly is going to get some, that, that kid sitting in the garage be like, you know what? Apple has a little too much power. Yeah. Or yeah. that Zuckerberg sitting in his garage. Yeah. To that, be like, you know, fuck this. Yeah, exactly. And they're going to go find the alternative. And it could be a, a piece of eyewear or it could be whatever. Who knows what it is in the future. Yeah. But I, I don't believe the phone we have today, 20 years from now, we still are carrying it around. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Because at the end of the day, I do think that to your average customer or like you're just person walking around, they like Apple more because of these changes. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. But competition-wise, it would just take a Google or a Facebook or whatever to actually make a competing phone. Yeah. So they could get their data back. Yeah, I mean, look, everything in history gets disrupted. Yeah. It just does. I agree. Nothing lasts forever. Uh, D, let's pause for one second and talk about freaking Car Tracker, man. I mean, it sounds like the hottest company. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like, I don't know, like maybe one of the most successful, like as far as hearing from our customers that they used and... I think all of our listeners sold their car. I literally think so. <laughs> I think that episode aired and millions of people the next day sold their car. <laughs> and all to Ollie and car drivers. Yeah. So if you're in the market to sell your car and get above market, you got to hit up car trackers. It's a pretty easy process. It's not, you don't even have to go there. Like That's insane. go to Carvana or what are their CarMax. You do it on FaceTime. Yeah. Or and do a test drive on FaceTime. They send you know, your money same day. They wire you the money. Same day. Here's a kicker. Bring up group chat. Tell them you heard about them on the podcast. And they'll give you an extra hundred bucks. Mention it after they give you the offer. True, true, true. Good point. Because then they'll just might... Bake it in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Mention so wait till you get your offer and then say, you know what? That's going to be a hundred dollars more. Yeah. Because so, I listen to group chat, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but it literally feels like... Everywhere I go, everyone's like, oh, I sold my car. I sold my car. Literally. Like people are coming up to you in the street. I literally, someone came up to me on the street and said, I sold my car. 
Like I sold I'm my like, last car. Home. I sold my sister's <laughs> car. I sold my sister's You just go. You just sell the all street. your family's cars. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah, you got like, your fucking cars. I saw a Camry down in there to the neighbor. <laughs> <and> sold that. <laughs> you don't even have to sell your own car. <laughs> <laughs> you see a car, sell it. Oh my god! If you can get into it, you can sell it. <laughs> just walk, walk down the street, go FaceTiming. <laughs> We're not uh, advocating for this fraudulent yeah, behavior. Don't steal by the cars, way. but listen, if you are trying to sell your car. Hit up Car Tracker. We've had some very, very pleased audience members, and uh, they do a great job. They're on Instagram as Car Trackers or CarTrackers.com. There you go. Let's get back to the episode. Let's talk about my boy Elon Musk. I mean, the word's starting to come out. Like, people are just talking about it a lot. Could be the first trillionaire. Yeah. So, you know, obviously, like we talked about, this was, I guess, probably now a couple years ago when we started kind of celebrating companies passing the trillion dollar market cap. I forget who was first, but there was um, Apple and Microsoft and whatever. Um, But now people are talking about how there is a pathway for good old Elon to become the world's first trillionaire himself because of the, you know, roadway that SpaceX has. Yeah. And I'm I'm here for it. And, and, you know, uh, Forbes has like a real time billionaires list. Yeah. And Elon Musk currently is worth $230 billion. Jeff Bezos is worth $194 and Bernard Arnault is $187. Wait, Jeff is, I mean, uh, uh, Elon is currently first place? Yes. And and I think the reason why people are saying he could be worth a trillion dollars is Tesla is on absolute fire. I mean, it's about to be a trillion dollar company on its own. SpaceX, which is publicly traded, when this thing, I mean, privately traded still, yeah. when SpaceX will go public, yeah. and guess what? The revenue, profit will not fucking matter. Yeah. This stock is going to go berserk. Yeah. I when mean, do you think, is there, there's no like actual knowledge of when it will go public, right? No, but you know, he, they raised money, I know, last year in the private sector. Yeah. And I think, I remember I, was, I got a sheet on it. I think they were raising at $20 billion. And I was like, damn, SpaceX is worth $20 billion? Now, hindsight, it's probably worth five hundred billion. <laughs> yeah, it's true, man. That thing is gonna fucking take off. I think it's gonna be like the <laughs> the the crazy culty support of Tesla, but times ten. Yeah, I think like globally, there's space is so big, and yeah. the people's passion for it. And I think you know, I uh, in New York, I was running with someone that is in the space world, and he was explaining to me the economics that SpaceX has with um, NASA and yeah. their relationship with NASA. And I'm like, oh, this thing is going to make bank. Yeah. Because NASA can't efficiently do anything. No. So they're going to st- have to contract out to people like SpaceX or Axiom, I think was the other company. Or Blue Origin. I mean, that's... Blue Origin. And they're so, fighting hard. And, and you're talking globally, like all of these companies are going to... Countries are going to rely on they all want to be involved in that space race. Like SpaceX is stands, and they're the brand. Space. I see oh, yeah. people wearing SpaceX sweatshirts. Yeah, I blew. And I guarantee have... you, they didn't go to MIT and are not a rocket well, scientist. Yeah. Maybe we should add a SpaceX. Uh, yeah, we need a SpaceX maybe sign. We should. Yeah, maybe a SpaceX we should. flag. Maybe you can buy like a SpaceX, um, like actual suit that we could. Oh yeah, put yeah. Up, like a Halloween costume. Yeah, and just you know, we're astronauts. We should do like. Um, uh, uh, Quickest way to be a millionaire starter kit. Yep. Harvard hoodie, SpaceX hat. Yep. Uh, NFT, uh, mid-level NFT knowledge. Mid-level NFT knowledge. Uh, here's the five discords you have to subscribe Like when you to. stop at lunch, uh, instead of pulling out your wallet, you just pull out your ledger. Yep. Yep. You don't, you're not. Raise the money and Whatever, disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Go to space. <laughs> yeah, I uh, you you have to. I'm trying to think if you would like it. I can't tell because your taste is so fucking weird. But the documentary countdown on Netflix is is in, that about SpaceX? Yes. Okay. It's about SpaceX took four civilians and for the first time ever, four civilians went up and orbited the Earth for three days. Wow. And it tells their whole story. Like one woman had cancer growing up. Another one's dad, like steered you know john glenn down from his mission another one like is a, a really rich entrepreneur another one whatever and it's the most amazing piece of marketing that maybe i've ever seen a brand do because it's a netflix special and it's so well produced 
And it's all about just SpaceX sending this great, yeah. um, diverse, yeah. uh, multicultural group of people. That's what I'm talking about when, when you talk about like companies are always like, um, how do you stay relevant? And it comes down to content. Yeah. And there's so many different ways to do it. So if you're SpaceX, you put out this piece of content with Netflix, which is where your audience yeah. is, lives. Yeah. And how many, when it's all said and done, 100 million people are going to watch that documentary. Yeah, whether or not, it's true. That's what Netflix will say. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think, think about the marketing that is. That's why I think yes. for Elon Musk to be a trillionaire seems like a slam dunk. Totally slam dunk. And for the record, he's barely even in, he like does an interview in the beginning of the show and you never see him again. I think that's smart too. Like yeah. distance himself, like let it be its own thing. There's a scene where they're getting ready to get like on the rocket or whatever or prepping and like he walks, you see him like through a window walking through the SpaceX headquarters and like it just kind of pans down like there he is and then like comes back. Like it's wow. just like this mysterious, mysterious. figure. Yeah. It's Man, so good. I doubted Elon Musk. I thought he was a bit of a train wreck. Now he's going to be a trillionaire. Yep. We were wrong. <laughs> we were all wrong. And shout out to everyone still is holding on to the shorts. Yeah. <laughs> My gosh. Um, What's up with AKA Brands? AKA, AKA Brands uh, acquired Minimal. Minimal. Um, you know way more about AKA Brands than I do. What's going on over there? So I've been you know, hyping up AKA Brands yeah. because I look at all these other companies going public and they're kind of they a train wreck. Yeah. And then AKA actually looks like a really good business mm-hmm. and their stock is, ain't doing shit. Mm-hmm. So they're worth $1.3 billion. Um, they uh, are profitable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, Boring. And, yeah. And, and and I think like they are, they own Culture Kings, which is a big Australian streetwear kind of um, e-commerce site. Yep. They own Princess Polly. They own Pedal and Pop, Reb Dolls. And now they own Minimal. Minimal is an LA um, streetwear kind of concept that... Uh, has been around. I'm sure if you're a, a young man, you've definitely been served their ads. They they were really good on Facebook ads early on. Yeah. So they're a twenty million dollar business. They do three million of EBITDA, and it is looks like they got a forty eight million dollar acquisition, uh, cash and stock. And I think the interesting part about it is like, AK Brands, and then there's another company that's about to go public, Solo Brands, that has uh, take it. They have a Solo Stub, a kayak business. Chubbies um, and, and another business. There's like these brand aggregators that are coming public that are actually like pretty healthy, profitable, interesting businesses that nobody's paying attention to because everyone's paying attention to like the high flyer yeah. bullshit companies. Yeah. And I think like there's a lot of these companies that look pretty amazing that I think in like five years they're going to be like, damn, those companies were cheap. Yeah, It's just they're not sexy to Wall Street right now. Would you ever go public? Me? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, if it seems kind of like your world. Yeah, this is literally our business. Yeah. Um, maybe. It seems like a... I feel like you just need a different type of person to go public. Than you? <laughs> <laughs> Than someone who fucking drinks tequila and talks shit three days a week. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know I mean, I'm mentally you, ready you, to be a public get like, uh, to Josh Kaplan, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, Josh uh, is perfect. Josh yeah. looks like a guy like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just interesting. It feels like, um, I mean, this is what you guys do. You've been yeah. doing it for a long time. You do it really well. And it's interesting to see this action, you know, in, in that space. Yeah, with and I think similar strategies. yeah, there's there's a lot of interesting things happening. I think there's a power in a lot of people coming together and, and doing something big. Yeah, like I think if the right brands are there, it can happen. Yeah, I agree. Okay, uh, what? Exciting. Yeah, I agree. What about um, you know, we've talked about NFTs, we've talked about crypto, we've talked about uh, Shiba Inu. We talked. I mean, literally since I would say it all started on the pod, probably in the Pete days. The this mentality that is. Uh, permeated through, especially the youth, but I would say every retail trader of any kind, this, like, there are these small opportunities, biggest one ever being GameStop, where you could get in on something that might be bubbling up on the message boards, make like a wild multiple return. Life-changing. Life-changing, and get out. Yep. And I got to say, I got one for us. You sure do. I've been scanning TikTok, you know, which is where all the real news is. Yep. And and I found it. Now it might it might it might force you to ignore some of your political beliefs, 
But look, hey, money trumps all. DWAC, you ever heard of it? Big fan. Yeah? <laughs> Would you be interested maybe in uh, putting a couple thousand? It seems like you could get, uh, might, might be a rocket ship here. Or maybe we already missed it. I, I, we may have missed it. You think we missed it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is Trump's new uh, media company. Um, that he's launching. Uh, he launched it via SPAC. Yeah. Incredible. Digital World Acquisition Corp. There we go. So this is his new thing. This is his answer to being banned on social. This is his answer to CNN and Fox News, all the above, right? It's all going to fall under here, it looks like. Um, he launched it via SPAC. Um, and this thing turned into the, the, the next thing. I mean, this is the next Dogecoin. This is the next GameStop. This thing absolutely exploded day one. Um, it looks like now we've kind of so day so it was trading at like nine something dollars a share mm -hmm. pre announcement of that it was involved with Donald Trump. Yep. The next day I think it closed at forty five. The next day it closed intraday hit a hundred and seventy dollars a share, and then now it's in the nineties, still it's way still the good. fuck up, yeah. still up eight hundred percent. Yeah, um, it, the company now is worth three point four billion. With nothing, right? Well, you know, he has his, you know, new business he's launching. But I'm just saying, no product. Yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah. Why would we? We, we don't care about, yeah. you know, product and shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think the the interesting thing is, is like, he this is where he's building his social media platform. Um, I think it's called Truth Holder. Mm. Um, That's interesting. And... Here's the thing. If this company's worth 3.4 billion, it's Donald Trump, right? Yep. That's fucking cheap. I think it's cheap. <laughs> I think the reason why I don't think I think we missed the like ridiculous makes no sense skyrocket. But look, I don't know where morally this falls, but I do think this guy <laughs> launches a halfway decent product and this thing fucking explodes. Explodes. Cuz I think you're seeing also that like these aren't I would guess, once again, I'm doing a lot of guessing here, but I don't think that a lot of the people that are in early on these like rocket ships are are diehard Trumpers. Yeah. And so I wouldn't think that this is actually Trump's fan base pumping up this stock. Um, I think it's people that just don't give a fuck and want to make money. Yeah, look, I think that's definitely the case. And we know that like there's enough people that do truth social, it's called. Uh, which Great name for he him, claimed though. will stand up to the tyranny of big tech. Good for him. And I just think that like, you have to remember 71 million people still voted for this guy. Yeah. He's a very powerful media figure. But think about this. 71 million people voted for him. Very powerful media figure. But we're not even talking about the people that like, would invest in something yeah. if it was going to make them money. Yeah. Even though they didn't vote for him. Yeah. That's... Fucking almost everybody. That's almost everybody. That's literally 95% of people. Yeah, no one has any moral... Uh, no. Not when it comes to returns on that stock yeah. portfolio. And I think it is so ripe for... The, it, it was the most mentioned stock on Friday on Reddit. Yeah. And, and no I think that people media. are going to have fun with it. Like, Keep in mind, this guy can't even say it's launching. <laughs> He's banned from having a voice anywhere. So imagine if this guy launches a thing, he has an outlet, he has 5 million followers, you know, right, right away. This thing could be... If he actually, like, he's chairman. Mm -hmm. Let's say he actually went and got a real CEO yeah. that is from this world. There, I guarantee you, Peter Thiel can put together some yeah. hotshot employee at Facebook that's, easy. that's conservative yep. and say, go build this as a platform for everybody else. Yeah. And, and I believe that I, I believe social media is, is going to be more and more fragmented based on whatever your beliefs are. There's a social media platform for yourself. Yeah. Like, I don't think we can all live on the same platform anymore because we all have such differing beliefs on everything. And there's a growing portion of people, like substantially more than even a couple of years ago, that, that want that. Yeah. Like, because there are like, there's a lot of people getting silenced on these platforms. A lot yeah. of like left, right, mid center people. And yeah. I think like, I mean, look at fucking um, D David Sachs. I mean, he's part of the Teal Group, but like, yeah. he's someone who very openly talks about uh, wanting a sort of unregulated uh, yeah. social media. And he's a right-leaning guy. That yeah. guy. Those guys could easily put a CEO in there. Yeah, so I'm saying if he gets that CEO to come in 
and give them the proper tech and make the experience right for the consumer. Like, there's no reason why this can't work. I just know this guy can't get out of the way. Is the problem true? Yeah, <laughs> true. If he, but if he, if he actually went to like San Francisco conservative tech and say, "I want to do this the right way," yeah, I have the money now. Yeah, how do I go do this? Yeah, I just think it works. It could work. Look, and nothing else, I think on the lowest level, it could really work as a stock. Yeah, as a stock. <laughs> Considering now that we know in the real world, nothing underlying about the company actually matters. At all. Then this should work. You you literally launch a half-decent product and put a half-decent CEO just in place. Just name one. Yeah. This thing 10x is again. Yeah. We know the mattress guy is advertising. We got one advertiser. Yeah, there you go. The What's the Goya Foods? He's advertising. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go, yeah. My pillow. <laughs> You're good. That's right. 20 million in revenue already, first year. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, look, pay attention to it. I don't, once again, morally, you make your own decisions, but DWAC. Uh, I got a DM a from someone talk. who listens to the podcast and said, Holy shit, I own this spec. It just went berserk. I just made. 4x and then like five hours later he's like holy shit i'm up 10x <laughs> and he sold <laughs> yeah i think a lot of i mean people. think about that's that's the beauty of it it's like if you were tr- if you were tracking this thing and there was rumors that this was happening like two days ago yeah and you got in on it you'd be even if you didn't get the peak and by the way all the funds in it all sold dumped made they their did. money oh yeah so many people dumped and made their money there's a whole list of people that dumped and it's funny is, is there's also like pension funds in there. I mean, it's just like, it's a That's joke. Amazing. When it comes to money, there's no fucking moral clause. No. No, there's not. Okay. Uh, last but not least, I guess, you know what? We'll end on a negative note too. <laughs> fucking Lyft. Okay, so Uber, Uber has always, not always, but for a long time has had sort of a bad reputation. Like they yeah. were looked at as the, but especially between Lyft and them, they were looked at as the ones who didn't care about their drivers. They didn't care about their passengers. Didn't care about anything but expansion and profit, really. Yeah. There's been a lot of stories about sexual assaults and rapes and violence and stuff like that happening in Ubers. Um, they've been looked at that way for a long time. Lyft has always been kind of, I mean, yeah, looked at as the good guys. Transparent. Yeah, yeah and they've even run ads kind of portraying the Uber guy um, as mean and money hungry and whatever. And Lyft is just so happy and fun and they take better care of all their people. Um, they have, however done a long overdue safety report and they have recorded more than 4,000 sexual assault cases. So you have to put this in context. Okay. So 99% of its journeys had occurred without any safety incident. Okay. Um, But with that being said, 4,000 sexual assault cases or complaints from 2017 to 2019 is kind of a lot. So two years, this is globally, anywhere they are. Yeah. And it's mainly drivers assaulting passengers? We got to think? Or we I, don't know? I assume. Am I drawing an unfair? I mean, I don't know. I mean, you think there's the passengers coming in and just... I don't think so. Not very often. Yeah. Uh, so Lyft's obviously argument is saying that considering a percentage of our rides, yeah, um, it's very, very low. Yeah. But it's a pretty absolute number. It's fucking big. Yeah, it's tough to look at as a number. Yeah. By it's, itself. And, and I'm guessing it's women more so than men. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, like even... I'm, I'm curious to hear like from a woman's perspective, do they feel safe taking an Uber at night by themselves? I know most like, like no. Like I would say safe meaning no. Like I would say on edge. Yeah. It is probably. They'll do it because they have no other choice. Yeah, they'll do it and safe in terms of like, they don't <laughs> think that they're about to be like kidnapped, but they do definitely feel on edge. There's definitely a lot of like, can you pretend we're on the phone or can you can I call you and talk to you through the whole ride? Yeah. Can you pretend you are at the place I'm going and you're waiting for me? That's a huge problem. Yeah. And I I'll mean, tell you, it makes me uneasy too. I mean, I've, I've um, even Kareen or her friends or whatever, uh, you know, two in the morning said, all right, so we're sending you home in an Uber. And and it seems sketchy. Yeah. You know? Which is, I mean, that's kind of, I guess that makes the case more and more for why autonomous vehicles will be very, very important. Because like, 
there's a half your audience doesn't feel fucking safe. Yeah. It's not a good good experience. You wanna know the other fear that just jumped into my mind though is like, what if you're alone? What if you're a young girl alone on the way home, headed down Sunset Boulevard at three in the morning, but in an autonomous vehicle alone? Like stopped at a stoplight. You know what I mean? Like, are you a target to, because there's not even anyone there now to, yeah, at yeah. least there's maybe a male driver or whatever, another female, whoever it is. Um, at least there's two people always when it comes to outside. You got to tint those windows. Yeah. And bulletproof those things. Bulletproof tint. I agree. I totally agree. That way, if it was, those things were just like little rolling fucking armories, you'd be fine. Yeah. It's like a tank. Yeah. <laughs> like we're going to make sure you get home. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I just, I, here's my biggest question. What are the records of how they responded to the cases? Yeah. That says Are they all. terminating the drivers? Yeah, or are things kind of getting tucked under desk? I think yeah. for a long time, like the criticism of Uber was that those cases were kind of ignored. Yeah. I Yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a big um, problem to solve if uh, a big portion of your users don't feel safe. It's insane. I I've never hopped into Uber and not felt safe. Yeah. Because whatever, no one's trying, no one's to, trying talk to talk to me. Assault, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But um, the only times I've ever felt unsafe is if I smelled weed, if I smelled alcohol. Yeah. Um, I, I got in a car once with this guy had a breathalyzer, and he had to blow into it every like time no. the car turned off. Bullshit. He turned off, and he's like, "I got just you know." Can like, you blow into this for me? Yeah, yeah. I was just like, uh, fuck. <laughs> oh I need to get out God. of this car. Um, but haven't you ever had, like last night, last night, to be honest, I, we, we were coming home and we went to um, Halloween Horror Nights. We were coming home in an Uber and the guy was just making weird, like almost like was on the 101 and would kind of drift and then like, like jerk sleeping. back in a little bit. Yeah. like I, I Why did you Uber in that instance? Did you drink? We drank a little, yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um, also, parking's so bad. Yeah. But so, yeah, he would kind of drift and then yank back in. And like, not terrible, but it did cause me to like stop my conversation and sit up in my seat and be like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Yeah. Like, this guy could just ride off the road. But that's probably the most unsafe, like those little instances. I've yeah. never felt like my guy was or girl was like wasted or anything. I definitely have felt like that. You've had a fucking breath. It's just like, where do you draw the line if you're one of these services? Like, don't you think? Having a breathalyzer in your car should disqualify you. Because yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know how is, the law works, but what part do you have to get to to have that? Yeah. That's multiple DUIs? Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah I mean, like four? Yeah. <laughs> that's, where, that's where Lyft and Uber draw the line. Four DUIs. Yeah. Like, hey, as long as you breathe into that thing. <laughs> it's just, yeah. I think that, look, I think to a certain degree, the ideas of like all of these, you know, Postmates and Uber and all that stuff maybe got ahead of like, how you keep them safe. Because at the end of the day, you are just taking rides from strangers. Yeah. It's it's hitchhiking. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, it, it is. And it, it is, it's a scary thing. And I think it's it's one of those things that like the technology has made life a lot easier, but it hasn't kind of completely solved the problem. I, I don't know. We weren't a taxi uh, society in LA pre- like I used to take taxis, yeah. But I was a very few group of people that yeah. used to take taxis. Yeah. Um, I so, how many sexual assaults happened in taxis, like in a year in the old taxi day? You know, I think because taxis were regulated pretty heavily, I, I, I'm guessing it was lower. I wonder. This but they is like a regular that, like, ba- barrier kind. Yeah, they have the barrier, and they're just trying to rip you off. That's true. That's all taxis want to do. They're not trying to talk to you. They yeah. just literally want to triple charge you <laughs> yeah, for do. the same ride that you paid fake dollars for. That's true. But um, and so I could be completely wrong, and I have no idea. But you know, this is just it's this is kind of scary. Definitely needs fixed. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, there you have it. A little bookend of uh, some negative news yeah. uh, stuffed all in the middle with some happy fun times. Yes. Welcome to group chat. We're just a couple Harvard grads can sit down and have a nice conversation. <laughs> that so happened to also work at SpaceX. It's crazy, I know, but we've done it. That's the path. You want to go to Harvard and then you want to go to SpaceX. And then all the while, study the metaverse. Study the metaverse. At home, on yeah. Discord. Okay, welcome to group chat. I don't know what else you want from us. <laughs> There's the key to success. <laughs> Cream of the crop. Yeah. Um, do we have any shout outs? Shout outs, anybody? I don't have any shout outs. No, no, I don't think we do. <sighs> Fucking sick. Okay, guys. Well, uh, happy new week. Uh, 
Halloween week. You got any plans? Oh shit, it's Halloween. Sunday, so you got time. Uh, Do the kids trick or treat? In the I think we're gonna take Dominic trick or treating. Nice. First year ever. First year ever. Last year, what it was in the first year, to have been interested in it. He is. We haven't figured out how to get him into a costume yet. Does he care about who he wants to be? No, I think he thinks it's stupid. Stupid. Wow. Okay. He likes ghosts. Make him a ghost. Just in general, he said, "I'll be a ghost." Okay. How old is he? Four. Yeah, I feel like. Do you think it's, it's probably like closer to six or seven? Your like imagination starts kind of running wild. Like, I think I'm, other kids are. I think my kids not because it's like. Fuck this. <laughs> this is why the fuck stupid. are we dressing up? But to be fair, I think Halloween's really stupid too. So. That's okay. There you go. <laughs> yeah. He's like, Dad, let's stay home and watch the Rock movie. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> let's go watch Fast Nine and yeah. show you what the real world's about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm surprised but, he doesn't want to dress up as a garbage man. He, the fast. idea yeah. of yeah. we gave him all the options. Like, do you could literally dress up as anything? Because I think, um, like, he goes to a soccer thing. Everyone's dressing up next Sunday. Uh, I think that this, like, his school friends are throwing like a at someone's house a Halloween party, and everyone's dressed up. So we're trying to explain to him, like, "Hey, you're going to be the only one not wearing a costume." Doesn't care. Doesn't give a shit. I'm down for that. Good for him. <laughs> That's very kids. much like my dad's personality. Yeah. Like whatever. These clowns want to go dress up. It is. I'll stop in. I'm out of here. Which, to be fair, I never felt a certain way. If I, I used to go to parties not dressed up. I'm like, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Well, good for Dom. I, and I'm not looking forward to everyone's Squid Game costume this week to see 500 oh, yeah. times over. I mean, you, you can just probably drive around Hollywood and just will look like Squid Game. Yeah, everyone's good because it's an easy costume. You still wear a stupid tracksuit. Yeah, that's oh, that's the why bands. the white bands went up and sick. Yeah. For Halloween. Halloween. Through the roof, yeah. So, I mean, okay, great. You're not original if you're dressing up as Squid Games. True. I hate to say it, but <laughs> I'm it's just going to shit all over your costume right now. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fair enough. Uh, there you have it. Everyone have a great week. Uh, we'll see you Tuesday. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>